Hello students. So in the last lecture we discussed the very important principle of quantum physics that every quantum particle obeys Heisenberg uncertainty principle that if the uncertainty in the position is delta x and if the uncertainty in the momenta is delta px then they obey delta x into delta px is greater than or equal to h cross by 2 and we see that as the uncertainty we try to localize the particle then the uncertainty in the momenta it increases or if we try to take or form a state of definite momenta then the uncertainty in the position of that particle would be indefinite let us try to see that now so first i'll try to write what we have learnt till now in just two lines then we'll try to see more about the wave functions so we have learnt from young's double slit experiment that young's double slit experiment of electrons that is a quantum particle it tells us that that electron do not follow Newtonian trajectory and it is being associated with a wave whose wavelength is given by lambda is equal to 2 pi h cross upon p and this is de Broglie hypothesis and their arrival rate arrival on the screen is determined by a wave function psi psi this was given by de broglie and the de broglie hypothesis implies hypothesis in turn implies heisenberg uncertainty principle and we have already seen one example let me give you one more example of heisenberg uncertainty principle that if i take a particle of definite momenta p then a particle of definite momenta so if i take a particle of very precise momenta p then what do i expect about its position it's obvious from the heisenberg uncertainty principle that its position is the uncertainty in position is infinite and that we can see here that if there is a particle of definite momenta then i can write its wave function as a e to power i p x upon h cross a plane wave okay then mod psi square will give it will gives the probability of a probability density probability of finding the particle the particle at x and when i find mod psi square i will get a square because mod of this exponential will give you one what does it mean if the probability of finding the particle so basically if i plot psi in space then mod a square will give me a flat so constant yes if i want to plot mod psi square with x i plot like this what does it mean that the probability of finding this particle is same everywhere the probability 
of finding this particle particle is same everywhere what does it what can i say about the uncertainty in the position that if the probability of finding the particle is same everywhere then i can say that the uncertainty in position is infinite uncertainty in position is infinite and that's what we expected because from heisenberg uncertainty principle if the momenta is definite then the uncertainty in position should be infinite okay now what we have learnt till now that the state of the electron it is given by a wave function psi x and the probability of finding it at some point x is mod psi square and the electron having the definite momenta it's can be represented as e to power a e to power i p x by h cross now we can ask a question that when the underlying physics is underlying physics is quantum of all the phenomena then why do the world look like classical physics is quantum then why do world look like classical look classical this is the same question as we asked earlier that the light obeys geometrical optics whereas actually it is a wave it means that the scales at which we are observing that gives you what you are able to observe so for example when the wavelengths in the problem are so small then the wavelengths in the prob wavelengths then the other lens then quantum effects they become very small and if they are large then we can see the quantum effect otherwise we'll be always will be able to see the average effects and then when the wavelengths are very small then we will be able to see only the average effect because we will never see the oscillations and all the interference terms will get washed away so when the wavelengths in the problem are much smaller then other lens lens then quantum effects they become negligible and we see the world as classical okay and then in such a case what will happen i1 plus 2 this becomes equal to i1 plus i2 it means that there is there are no interference terms so when there are no interference terms then whatever you are getting the resultant intensity that will be equal to the i1 plus i2 it means the world is classical the two intensities due to opening due to two slits they will add up okay and when you see the interference effects it means the wavelengths in the problem are large and then you will be able to see the quantum effects and then you will start worrying about the interference terms okay now we'll try to see one more important point about the wave function that already i have discussed the probability density the probability density is what the probability density is defined as the probability of finding the particle at point x so once again i write that probability density is probability probability of finding the particle of finding the particle at point x 
and in a region dx and we know that the probability of finding the particle in the whole space if i do if i add up all the probability densities then it should add up to 1 so i should get px dx here if i do all space then it should add up to 1 that particle has to be somewhere now if i take for example a wave function if i take as a constant for example if i take a c and if i take this wave function c for mod of x less than a and the wave function is zero for mod of x greater than a what does this mean mod of x less than a it means that you are taking x from minus a to a and mod of x greater than a means x is less than minus a and x is greater than a okay so basically my wave function would be if i plot try to plot from minus a to a my wave function is a constant c this is a plot between psi x and x okay and after this the wave function is zero so what does this wave function tells me that there is if i find mod psi square i will get c square which we have discussed earlier it means that there is an equal probability of finding the particle everywhere within the box whose length is a now if i take another wave function whose which is written as 2c and then i try to find the probability then again what we will get 4c square which is again a constant it means that if i take psi x is equal to c or if i take psi x is equal to 2c there is no change in the physics of this problem quantum mechanically that the probability of finding the particle is same everywhere so we need to fix this constant that is what is known as normalization of the wave function so basically these are the so the probability of finding the particle in the first case it is same and the second case is also same everywhere so basically these are the relative probabilities and when i normalize the wave function how do i do that i will normalization means that i want to fix the constant normalization of the wave function so how do i do that i know the condition that all the probabilities they add up to one so if i take my probability density minus a to a psi square dx is equal to one then and this is equal to a square the dx integral will give me x which will go from minus a to a this is equal to one and if i find a i will get 1 by root 2a so i have fixed my wave function it is being normalized and this is what is absolute probability when i find try to find the probability with a fixed constant then i will get an absolute so this after normalizing you will get an absolute probability whereas before normalization you will get relative probabilities so my wave function would be this when mod of x is less than a also i can say that that wave function is allowed whose square is integrable from minus infinity to infinity the wave function is square integrable the allowed wave functions are those those when this satisfies
with satisfy equation or we can say they are square integrable okay now we will try to see we know something about the wave function it may be a generally complex and whose it has to be square integrable it has to be it has to be finite and then it has to be and we'll see in some problems that it has to be continuous and its derivatives are also should be continuous okay we'll see slowly now what next we have to so we were talking about all the kinematics of quantum yes so we can have we can know the position of the particle we can know the momentum of the particle and also so now if i want to see that how the wave function will behave with time i want to study the dynamics of the system as for example in classical if i want to study the dynamics of the system i want to know the forces acting on the system then if i know the force then i can study how much is the acceleration how much is the energy then what do i do i use newton laws of motion so if we would like to study that how the psi changes with time okay so what is my next so this is another important step to understand we will try to study that now how our wave function changes with time i want to study more about my wave function that is we would like to study dynamics of the quantum system so like newton laws of motion we also require an equation of motion fundamental equation of motion in quantum mechanics we'll try to see in the for the lecture thank you